she does this. She brings one of her toys, which is this Gatorade lid, and takes it directly to the mirror. Have you ever questioned the nature of your reality? Hey guys, Disembodied Brock here to give a special shout out to our top tier patrons on Patreon and let you know that we have some amazing Toucan merch. This all goes to help the birds and I out exponentially and we cannot thank you enough. If you'd like to help in other ways and enjoy the channel, please make sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell. We hope you enjoy and maybe learn a thing or two about toucans. All right guys, so today we're gonna be doing a video that's a little bit different and we're gonna be filming it a little bit differently too because I didn't want to disrupt the possible outcome of the video by talking over it while I was recording it. So uh, today we're gonna be going over something called the mirror test. It's not a 100% proven theory because there's a lot of different variables with different animals that make it impossible to really be able to apply it to all different species because many animals like toucans are limited by their morphology first of all but others also use more senses more primarily like hearing or smell like an elephant for instance than they do vision but for our purposes it's going to work a little better because birds are you know they're visionary from visionary director Toucan, Sam, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways, we did some testing on some toucans, uh, all three toucans. Now here is part of the issue. Part of the issue is gonna be uh, Tupac and Beatrix aren't going to behave like a normally, or a normal toucan would because they have issues. They were rescues, if, if some of you guys don't know, they're both rescues, Tupac has several issues, uh, arthritis, fused joints in his knees and ankles, and cataracts and all kinds of other crazy stuff that you can get caught up on in other videos if you're interested. Uh, Beatrix has some emotional issues and trust issues that are just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna show you guys how they react just for the sake of it, but they're not gonna be reliable. The primarily, the primary t subject is going to be Maeve. Because not only is she arguably the smartest toucan I have and that I've seen, but she also behaves normally. So we're going to be taking a look at that now. So for those of you who don't know, it tests whether an animal is self-aware, essentially. Uh, they, they give the animal time to warm up to the idea of there being a mirror, let them investigate, and a lot of times they'll start realizing there's something not quite right, if they're smart enough. A dog and other... I don't want to say dogs aren't intelligent, because they are, but I, I don't think they're as intelligent as birds, or the great apes, or elephants, or dolphins. And those are among some of the animals that have actually passed the test, those being things like chimpanzees, bonobos, dolphins, elephants. Uh, only eight species have actually passed the test, uh, including one bird, and that is a magpie. Now, magpies are in the Corvid family. I'm gonna test May very similarly to how they did the magpie, and we're gonna compare the results with the video. So we're gonna start off here with Tupac, and you can see Maeve has come to see what's up. <laughs> and she's quickly gone. Now, Tupac sat here for a while, but he's, you know, and not only is he pretty old, but he has some movement issues, and he's just generally not as curious, not nearly as curious as a normal toucan would be. He does stretch his neck out here, you'll see. And look at the mirror, and he, and he does move a little closer to investigate. But generally, he just doesn't take that much of an interest in what's going on. And that's okay, because, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's on his retirement, so. Now Beatrix, uh, she behaves exactly how you'd expect. <laughs> So here's where it's interesting with Maeve. So she sits back here on the lamp, you can see, and investigates for quite a while before she comes up. She just looks at it from afar. Eventually she starts moving closer. You know, immediately she can tell there's not, there's something not quite right. She doesn't try to attack it. 
And here's something I've heard from a lot of other people that have toucans or have tried to have them react to a mirror before. Um, with Aeroceres, not, not the big toucans. But they, they say that they try to, you know, they chatter at it, they try to attack it. Maeve isn't trying to attack right now. Like, like you've seen where she tried, where she and Beatrix get into a, shuff, a shuffle or a scuffle. You've seen Maeve go into attack mode before. This isn't it. So she hops away and immediately notices that the bird on the, in the mirror disappears. And so she tries to come up here and to investigate. And this is generally probably what you would expect from an animal of sizable intelligence. Now keep in mind, even with people, um, humans aren't able to actually pass this test until they're about 18 months old. And even some non-Western children that are even around mirrors won't pass until after they're six or seven years old, in some rare instances. Now, with a toucan, you have to keep in mind that they can't see over their bill, so they turn their head to the side in order to investigate. So keep that in mind as you're watching her. If she's trying to get a closer look, she'll, she'll turn her head towards the object instead of facing forward. She spent, this was probably over the course of an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Now, toucans have very short attention spans, so I had to, I had to pace the recording a little bit. Every time she'd come up near the mirror, I would start recording again. You can see she's starting to figure things out. You can definitely see the little gears in her head turning. And she constantly, you know, goes to the opposite or the other side of the mirror to investigate behind it and, you know, try to watch herself disappear. Now here's where it gets even more interesting, at least to me. Because after a while of investigating like you've seen, she does this. She brings one of her toys, which is this Gatorade lid. Well, she drops it at first, <laughs> but then later gets it back and takes it directly to the mirror. And you can see here that she's just kind of, she's watching the toy in the mirror and she's very curious about, I, I don't know if she's trying to test whether it would appear in the mirror as well when she brought it over to it. and. I'll admit that when this first happened, I thought, well, maybe it's just a coincidence she wanted to play with her toy. She didn't play with this toy at any other part of the house after this. So she, she puts it here, and she's looking in the mirror at its reflection. And then she tries to go and look behind again. goes behind the mirror. She's trying to figure it out. And that's what's that's what's the most interesting to me is that she's trying to test it. She comes back. First she leaves the toy alone, but then she picks it up. Just, uh, just watch her, because you'll notice she's turning her head towards what she's trying to look at. She's not trying to attack, she's investigating. And then of course she drops it again. <laughs> now I thought this was just a coincidence, but then it gets even more weird, because after a few minutes, she brings over a cap of a different color. 
This is like a Barbasol lid, basically, from a shaving cream can. And she starts doing essentially the same thing, but in a different area. She's still watching herself in the mirror as she's hopping back to that perch. She comes back and again investigates. And you can see by her eyes that she's watching the reflection of the cap in the mirror. Here's where the real test begins. I try to copy the test with the magpie. Uh, this tape didn't stick very well, but you can see she immediately goes after it. And she's looking, she, you can see she's looking directly at the tape on her throat. At this point, I, I forgot I was supposed to move out of frame. <laughs> because I was so interested in what she was doing. You can see she's looking directly at it, like there's no mistaking it. Goes out of the mirror, pops her head back around to look. And then I get, I get my phone here to get a little closer. Because so I wasn't sure if she was going to go off somewhere else and try to get it or not. Now she does this for a little while where she's trying she's trying to get the piece of tape in the mirror but then she stops I think after she figures out she can't do it and she starts trying to pick it off outside of the mirror and she now realizes that it's on her own throat I don't think it caught her eye outside of the mirror because the whole point of the test is to try to put it in a place where they can't see unless they see it in the mirror and the best place to put it is in their throat because usually their bill is blocking that area and they can't even really preen up on their throat because their beak is too long so she's trying to reach it and she does this for a few minutes until eventually she comes back here and then finally gets it And she's got it, like, stuck on her beak, so I gotta get it for her. <laughs> but there it is. So what do we learn from this? I think the results are, they're certainly more interesting than I expected them to be. I expected her to kind of investigate the mirror. I didn't expect her to go get toys or to even try to get the mark off. And the way that she behaves is almost identically to the magpie in the video. Now I don't have other toucans that I can test this with effectively. Maybe Beatrix after a while. I think there's a good chance that Maeve recognized that that was herself given what you see in the video and that she has some sort of understanding that that is her own reflection. I don't know to what extent, maybe if I left the mirror out for long, we would get even better, or for longer, we'd get even better results. It's hard to say because we don't have more toucans to test it with to see if they behave similarly, 
but it, it looks almost identical to the footage of the Magpie. And you guys are gonna see that footage. It's probably playing right now. But I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that toucans could be self-aware? Are they smart enough to be aware of their own existence? I think, therefore, I am. I mean, they're clearly very smart. They are limited by what they can do because of their morphology, the way that they're made. The beak is just obstructs a lot of their vision, you know, out front. That's why they have to kind of turn their head to the side to get a closer look because they can see to the tip of their beak, but um, not very well. And then the beak is, of course, in the way a lot. So, but based on the video, I don't know. I'm gonna say inconclusive, but very promising. Um, and what do you guys think? Smash like if you think toucans are self-aware and are gonna take over humanity. <laughs> and let me know in the comments what your thoughts are, because I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say. And uh, we'll, we're gonna do this test in the future, don't worry. With hopefully with more birds, or you know, when Beat Beatrix gets better with her, um, when she gets more comfortable around me and everybody else, it'll be a little easier to do it with her. So, um, let me know what you guys think, and we will see you guys for the live stream Friday and probably another video this week. I don't know, see what I feel like. But everyone have a safe day, everyone have a fantastic week, and we will see you very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>